Caitlin gave a really great summary of the cuff side. I'm just going to give you a brief summary of the last week's meeting, some of the highlights that are arthroplasty related. Obviously, it's a two day virtual meeting. Korea was our GAF nation. What did we learn? What did we take away specifically in terms of arthroplasty? And, you know, I think there were four best papers. There were eight total best papers presented. There was one, two sessions and four of them were related to arthroplasty, well, actually three. And so I'm just going to summarize what these best papers really sort of talk to us about. So the first one um, was patient satisfaction and outcomes of reverse shoulder arthroplasty. And it was a minimum of 10 year follow-up, which we really don't have in the United States nearly as well as some of our European colleagues. And so I, I really think it was surprising and, and, and uplifting to know that the outcomes are better with our newer devices, our modern implants, our designs in terms of the innovations that benefited our outcomes with a 90% outcomes or survivability rate at 10 years. Um, there was a prospective blinded randomized control trial looking at stemless implants. You know, when people get bored and our outcomes get so good, we just decide to innovate more and more with other devices. And so I think stems have become a real point of discussion in terms of the humoral side. And they found that the stemless devices seem to do as well as the humoral implants and the stem devices as well. Well, one personally to me was, you know, looking at midterm out results and really actually they had five-year results of outcomes for radiographic of anatomic total shoulder. And this was at the central peg does um, many of you know and have seen this where sort of a quarter lock or whatever central peg is larger and then peripheral pegs and they sort of had surprising results that weren't as good as they expected this whole idea of the biomechanical and if you look at the dog studies of ingrowth in these central pegs really didn't pan out for these radiographic studies from these outcomes and they found that there was less central ingrowth and actually more lucency around them although it didn't cl clinically translate there's really no increased failure rates outcomes were as good the last one was on anti-inflammatories and, and rotator cuffs. And, you know, surprisingly, they had less narcotic use um, and really no um, safety or, or increased failure rates with that, which wasn't really arthroplasty. There was eight ACL, ICLs related to arthroplasty. I'm just going to briefly give you guys a highlight of them. One of them is on the humeral design, on the humeral side. You know, how much stem is really needed? And really, stems are getting shorter. Apparently, less is more. I'm a female, so I can put this slide up here with um, no modesty. But the bottom line is it's getting sexier to do less stem. And then really uh, a lot, uh, two of the study or two of the thing uh, sessions talked about the idea of preoperative planning, innovation, whether it's GPS, every company is sort of coming up with it. They called it the clash of plans, which I thought was a really nice play on things. It started off with a, the, it was pretty good data, it was interesting. There was a survey sent out to ASCS members in 2019. And interestingly enough, 70% of the members at that time were using it for some sort of planning. And I think probably by now where it's even, even more an increased rates. What, what's the point of planning? You know, what's the idea and what can it benefit us? Really the idea of CT planning is maybe we can do a better job of decreasing or preventing glenoid failures, whether it's better implant selection, better understanding of the pathology and how to correct it better implant fixation, better backside coverage, or less risk of vault perforation. Ultimately, the bottom line is, where are we today? We've got a lot of different softwares, different platforms. Everybody seems to measure this deformity differently. Some are automated, some are manual, some are a combination. Different sister systems offer different solutions. And so the problem is, we don't really have a consensus on this, and we really don't understand, and different surgeons approach things differently whether it's augmented, short stems, what you wanna talk about. The bottom line is there's really not a lot of consensus on this technology. And then there were three ICLs talking about um, revisions, failures. We just touched on it. Infection's a huge part of it. Um, although it's a small percentage, it can be devastating for our patients and very difficult to treat once you become positive. And the bottom line is it's really with increased arthroplasty volume being done, we are going to see more and more of these revision surgeries in our practices. And it's a cost versus you know outcome of relative discussion. And then there were two that probably are more specific. I don't know in India, and I think it'd be interesting to hear from our colleagues in India whether this is an issue at all. But in the US, really there's a push to do less for more. So less money, less cost, and keep your outcomes do better. And that's really an interesting discussion. And I don't know if our colleagues internationally feel that push. Um, Nir was honored by Dr. Bigliani. This was the, you know, sort of guest speaker. 
And then finally, we ended with some symposiums. Although there were four main symposiums, interestingly enough, one, some of them were on biologics, but really there was only one on symposium on arthroplasty. But the bottom line is the outcomes, the papers, the symposiums talk about the younger crowd and the older. You know, we're expanding our indications and that's clear. Three live surgeries were performed. Um, and I think that these are interesting because they're arthroplasty, but they all touch on sort of innovations. The first one was really interesting was on flex them with a mixed reality. Um, so that innovation, the idea of, you know, computer innovation technology in the OR is really an interesting translation. Short stem reverses what we just talked about, augmented options, and then a stemless device. So we've kind of touched on these, but that, that's the bottom line. And so where are we going in the future? I think I just wanted to highlight for our Indian colleagues sort of some interesting technology that was put out there that's really not available and that was to me very innovative. And one of them is the virtual technology, the idea that we could virtually create this platform that train and teach not only residents, but future surgeons on new technologies as they come. The interactive idea of that experience and precision orthopedics has offered this and presented this in more of a cost um, innovative solution so that it's not costly for residency training programs for surgeons to obtain this. And then AI, the idea of big data can guide us on preventing and treating customized ways to solutions for our patients. The idea of taking this big data, real data that exists, so all the companies they're doing big um, databases is that maybe we could customize them so that when we sit with the patient, we could say, this is what your predictive motion is. This is what your pain will be. This is the exact risks that you personally will have. And this is based on well-published data. And they're talking about this by taking a lot of data, providing it and creating more predictive models. And I think it's really neat because they partnered with a technology company to do this. And this was an exact tech um, specific symposium that was produced. But I think that other companies that basically our colleagues right now have produced the exact same thing um, and some of them actually on our panel and provided this to AS, AAOS as another option. So the future is bright for arthroplasty. I thought it was really interesting and a great meeting to touch upon some of these things. 